Hello, today I'll be going through how to connect a 6000 series product with Motion Architect software, how to connect, how to upload user programs, and how to download. As I go through this, I'll be adding lots of tips and tricks. Let's go. This video will cover four main steps. First part, we'll be downloading and installing Motion Architect. Second, we'll confirm the PC's COM port number and reassign it if need be. Third, we'll cover proper wiring for RS-232 and testing communications. Fourth, using Motion Architect to connect, upload, and download. You'll need the 6000 series product powered on. I'll be using the Zeta 6000. Second, you'll need a serial cable and I'll get to the pinout when I cover the connection. Third, you'll need a PC with Windows XP with Motion Architect. Motion Architect was last updated in 1997, well before Windows 7. It's not compatible with Windows 7, nor does Microsoft's XP compatibility mode on Windows 7 work. At this time, other than the Zeta 6104 and the Zeta 6108, any other 6000 product are obsolete. Thank you for your business, but it's time to upgrade. We do have newer products, and hopefully you'll get many years out of them like your 6000. We can still repair many of these products. If you need repairs, contact your Parker distributor for an RMA number and pricing or for quotes on newer products. This video is for existing installations where you've gotten these back from repairs and you need to reload the programs or you want to back up your programs. Fourth, if your PC doesn't have a 9-pin serial port, buy a Cables Unlimited USB 2920 from Amazon. This has the FTDI chipset inside of it, and it works with all of our products on both XP and Windows 7, even up to 115,200 baud rate for products that use that speed. Other adapters aren't as good, such as Keyspan and Prolific, and they may or may not work. Prolific is common and works on XP, even though there's a driver for Windows 7, in our testing and support of customers have not had anyone get it to work with Windows 7. Why not have an adapter be able to work on both XP and Windows 7? The FTDI works on both. These adapters are less than 20 bucks and readily available from Amazon. Do not call us if you're having an adapter that doesn't have the FTDI chips set. So now that you've got the equipment together, go to parkermotion.com. We are always updating our website, so our homepage may look different, but on the top, go to our support page by clicking on, on support and downloads. Under download product software, you'll see a link to Motion Architect and click there. This will take you to the download section of our website. It's a free download. Click the checkbox next to Motion Architect 3.5 and then submit. If you haven't registered, you'll need to register. This will take you to the download page. There are two downloads you need. The first is Motion Architect. The second you need is the 6000 drivers. Motion Architect was designed to run on Windows 98, NT, and 2000 and also works on XP. The 6000 DRV will install the correct comms DLL for your PC's operating system. Also, read this note right here. When Motion Architect asks you to install the drivers, click No. After it's done installing Motion Architect, then you run the 6000 DRV, which is a separate installation for the drivers. I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Go ahead and use the defaults. Uh, the only thing to add is when you get to where it asks you if you want to install the 6000 communications drivers as part of the Motion Architect software install, click No. Uh, these will be installed with the DRV6000.exe. So, and then on the 6000 DRV, just use the defaults, that's fine. Uh, when it gets to the question, are you using a 6000 series product? Uh, do you want to install the 6000 operating system? That's only for the AT6000 cards, which were the ISA bus-based versions of the 6000 products, and those operating systems were originally shipped on diskettes. Those are actually available on our website if you're needing them. If you're using a standalone product that isn't an AT6000 card, then you can just click no. And then after you've installed it, if you try to run Motion Architect, you'll probably get this error, 
initial setup, please reboot. So obviously go ahead and, and restart your PC. So that was section one. Section two, we'll confirm the PC's COM port and then reassign the COM address if need be. So let's take a look on how to do that. So go into your start menu and go into control panel, then go to the system and then click on the hardware tab and then device manager and then um, open up the COM ports, uh, open up ports and then um, under USB serial port you can see here I'm using an FTDI USB 2920 adapter. My um, nine pin COM port on the back of my PC has actually been reassigned to COM5. I did that a long time ago. But um, so y you may or may not have one or two COM ports. Motion Architect only supports COM1, 2, 3, and 4. So if you need to reassign the port number, right click and go to properties. And this will open it up. And on the general tab under the manufacturer, this is the USB adapter, so this shows you the chipset on there. A lot of those adapters, you buy them from whatever electronics store, and you have no idea what's inside of there until you actually plug it into your PC. Um, the nice thing about the USB 2920 from Amazon is it specifically specs the FTDI chipset on there, so you already know what's inside of it. And then click on the port settings if you need to uh, change the port setting. Click on advanced. And then it will look like this. Uh, the you may need to reboot the PC if you change this. Windows should tell you if that's necessary. Click OK and now you're done. You can close this out. You can close out the port and the device manager. Now that we've ID'd the COM port number for the PC, let's take a look at connecting serial communications. In this part, we'll cover serial connections. On the back of older PCs is a 9-pin COM port. There may be one or two. The USB 2920 adapter gives us a 9-pin output, just like the 9-pin COM port. Find a 9-pin cable and cut off the other end of it. Pin it out and find pins 2, 3, and 5. 2 on the PC is RX, which is receive. This will get connected to the TX on the 6000. Pin 3 is the TX, which is transmit. That goes to RX on the 6000. Pin 5 is ground. Many of the 6000 products have a second serial port. On the Zeta 6000, dip switches internal to it can change it to RS45 communications. If there's anything connected to COM2, go ahead and disconnect that device. You can just pull the connector out. That way, anything trying to communicate to the Zeta 6000 is not going to try to interrupt the communications that we're going to try to establish on COM1. The older RP240 keypad is initiated from the 6000 product. Stopping the program would prevent the RP240 from working, but go ahead and unplug it anyway. You won't want to try this when the machine is running. Go ahead and launch the Motion Architect. First item, go to the product selection and the default is the AT6400. Go ahead and change this for the product that you're using. If you're using the Zeta 6108 or the Zeta 6112, go ahead and, and select Zeta 6104. The 8 and the 12 amp are higher current levels, but the communications are the same. For the OEM ZL6104, select the Zeta 6104. Press OK. Then we need to verify the PC COM support. Go to terminal, and then this will open up a terminal window, and it already tried to connect to your COM port. So go ahead and uncheck the connect, and then under settings, then you should see serial port, and it won't be grayed out. So go ahead and click serial port, and then you'll see a window that looks like this. So go ahead and select the COM port that we identified in the device manager and then press OK. Then go back to transfers and click connect. So go ahead and do a type exclamation K to 
kill the program that could be running and then type trev which is tell revision this will verify if you're actually con connected to the 6000 and that you're transmitting and getting a response back also type exclamation k enter to kill the program and then type e1 enter and then echo one enter so try that as well too if you can't see what you're typing then let's do a loopback test so re remove the rx and the tx wires from the 6000 product and tie them together so everything we're typing goes down the transmit line and comes back on the receive line if you can see what you're typing then you have control of the com port if you can't see what you're typing then either you don't have control of the COM port, we have the wrong COM port number, so on the back of the older PCs there were two COM ports, try moving the cable over to the other one and see if that's it. Um, or some other product or some other software has control of the COM port, so go in your task manager, make sure everything else is turned off. Windows 98 and 2000 operating systems, the Allen Bradley RS Logic software would start automatically on power up and always grab control of the COM port. So go ahead and double check that that's not running and shut it down if you need to. If you still can't get, get a loop back, um, the other thing that could be going on is a bad cable. So try a different cable. Again, that's just pins two, three, and five. If you can't get a loop back to work, then you could have a short to ground or it could be open and it could be a bad solder joint on there. So now that we've verified the uh, communications, let's um, go ahead and use Motion Architect to upload and download and create a backup copy. In the terminal window, type SCLD and press enter and then type SCLV, SCLA, and then scale and those are your scaling parameters for your distance velocity and your acceleration and then scale is either zero or one zero is it's turned off if scale is one it's turned on start p uh, go ahead and type that and press enter that'll tell you which program is running anytime you do a power up or reset on the multi-axis you may get multiple numbers those are each axis separated by a comma left to right under transfers, go ahead and click Receive Motion Program. Then you'll see a window that pops up and lists the programs that are inside your 6000 product. Go ahead and click all of those. You may need to hold the Control key or the Shift key to select those. And then go ahead and press OK. Go ahead and then name where you want it to upload. I'm just using upload.prg. Um, the default is the MA6000 folder. You can change that if you need to. It's just uh, very difficult on older XP to find the desktop when you're navigating um, from this here. So I would just use the default. Go ahead and press OK. And then it will upload the programs. You'll see a little status bar. Um, go into, you can minimize the terminal window. I would just uh, not close it, but minimize it and go back to the main screen, click on editor, and then go to file open, and then go ahead and open the program. And then at the very top, type your scaling parameters. So even though they're inside the program, they also need to be outside of the program before the first delete and the define. The nice thing about having them inside the program is that when you do an upload, um, you can actually see them what what they are, um, but they actually need to be set in non-volatile memory, so they need to be outside the very first delete and define. So go ahead and you can either copy and paste if they're already in your one of your programs or from the terminal window, uh, you can click back. That's why I had you minimize it. Go ahead and type those in, uh, SELD, SELV, SELA, and then scale and then scroll all the way to the bottom and then type start p space and then the program that you had and this is how you uh, create a backup copy of that the start p is stored in non-volatile memory so that needs to be outside the end so each program does a delete and define so when it deletes all the programs if the start p was set then it's going to clear that so that's why it has to be at the very end 
uh, do a file save. Wouldn't be a bad idea to put this either on your network as a backup copy or put it on a USB memory stick and put that inside the control panel, maybe with a readme file with some description as well. Go ahead and click back on the terminal window, connect to the replacement unit that needs the program and power it up and connect the serial cable. Do an exclamation K and then a T rev to make sure we're, we're talking. Go ahead and do a transfers and send motion program. And then select the program and press OK. And then you're done. So go back into the terminal window, press enter a couple times, and then if you type TDIR, which is the transfer directory command, you should see the list of programs that were in your editor. And then if you want to spot check a couple of the commands, just type scale or start P without any argument behind it. It'll tell you what they're set to. And the only other thing that I'll add is some common troubleshooting commands on the 6000 products. Exclamation TERF, which is tell error report full. Exclamation TASF, tell access status full. And exclamation TASXF, that's the tell extended access status full. And you're only looking for anything that says yes. The nice thing about the F is that it gives you exactly what those bits actually are and the exclamation gives immediate status. So if you're running a program, you can actually get a response from the terminal window on there. So you can go ahead, power down, walk it out to the machine, connect everything back up, power it up, and you're good to go. This covers how to connect, back up the 6000 product, and download to a unit and verify the programs are in there. Thanks.